Well, aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good talk, and all those other languages that I don't know how to speak. Thank you for coming to today's live stream. My name is Master Paul. And today I'm going to be talking about a subject that is very, very fun and very interesting. And for those that have the ability and or are wise enough to stick around, you will get so much value out of today's live stream. It could literally shift many of the problem areas in your life. <clears throat> but it requires a, a base of knowledge. It requires... Um, the ability to understand the foundational teaching that everyone and everything has a soul. And so when you really grasp that at the level that it needs to be grasped, then the application of the subject matter today called soul communication can be truly um, applied in your life in such a way as to reduce or eliminate a great deal of the problems in your life. It is that powerful. So I encourage all of those uh, just tuning in or tuning in for the first time to really pay attention um, because the wisdom uh, that I give full credit to my teacher, Master Shaw, uh, who's received this wisdom and then transferred into his book, the first time it was de delivered uh, was in a book called Soul Communication, uh, which uh, was probably about 12, 13 years ago now that book's been out. Uh, but truly valuable information and then it was relisted again in uh, power of soul <clears throat> but i'll give you some background on it as we go so i hope that you are all able to stick around and enjoy this if not but the topic is of interest to you please like and subscribe and uh, make note of my web address and uh, my facebook address and you can always come back and watch the recording if you uh, are liked and subscribed on my page so let's check in with who has joined us so far. <clears throat> uh, welcome, Helen. Helen no no Nowalski. Can't quite read it. It's a little bit blurred out. Welcome, Deanna Victoria. Uh, welcome, Linda Griffith. Aloha, Alan Bell. Welcome, Marjana Mary. Welcome, Zabastra Themis and Janine, Master Janine. Welcome, Janine Wolf. Uh, aloha, Carl. Aloha, um, uh, Aliona. And welcome, Mark Wright. Aloha, Mel Griffith. Uh, welcome also to Zabistra. <clears throat> welcome, Trina Rabella. Welcome also to Alisa. And uh, anybody else whose name I may have missed, aloha and welcome. Thank you for joining. Jocelyn, welcome, Rosetta. Welcome. Uh, I think I've got all of you. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Thank you also for hitting the share button and all the, the lovely hearts. Very wonderful to see those. So, um, as indicated, today's topic could be very valuable. I have been using uh, soul communication in my life since I met Master Shah. When I heard this wisdom uh, for the first time, I, I, it, was, it was literally um, life-shaking in, in so many ways because I got, I got it instantly. I got the value of it. I was like, oh my God, if this is actually applied, if I actually apply what this master is teaching i could i could move mountains and in fact that is in many cases what has occurred in my life and it can occur in yours if you comprehend it and understand it uh, so truly a powerful wisdom so for those of you that are unfamiliar um, my name is master paul i've been doing these live streams for about two years now on facebook I've got my own website. You can check out the various things there if you're interested in growing your soul journey. All the wisdom is Master Shah's wisdom. <clears throat> uh, Master Zhigong Shah is a world-renowned healer, and he's written over 20 books, 11 New York Times bestsellers, four of which are number one New York Times bestsellers. His, actually, his newest book just came out. I don't have it to show you. Uh, truly remarkable wisdom in there. Highly recommend you get it. And it's very much a culmination of some of the highest level spiritual practices on the planet today. Uh, the kind of practices that honestly you would have to go walk into the mountains of China, wander around the mountains of China, talking at night in your meditative spaces to the beings of light 
uh, and the ascended masters that hide in the mountains and pray they find you before you die of starvation. And then one of them might find you, take, take you to their cave, and after 10 years of cooking and cleaning and serving with that master, they might share with you the wisdoms that Master Shah freely shares in these books. That's how enlightened those teachings are. So if you can get his newest book, uh, it's called uh, Tao Classic, T-A-O Classic. Um, truly remarkable the wisdoms and teachings in there. So I encourage you to learn more about that. Welcome talks, welcome uh, LaRonda, Aloha Erica, welcome also to uh, Hakate, and Aloha and welcome Patrice Whitaker. Thank you all so much for joining today. So let's go ahead and connect uh, as we do each and every live stream while we're allowing Facebook to gather a few more souls. We're gonna place our hands together in what's called the soul light, soul service hand position. And Master Shah's wisdom, there are four major powers. There's the fifth power released. We're not going to talk about it today. Uh, body power, sound power, mind power, soul power. Body power, where you place your hands is where Chi goes. Mind power, created visualization. Um, sound power, the mantra itself. And then soul power, which we're going to talk a lot about today. You're going to get a huge dose of soul power today. So let's place our hands in the hand mudra position, dropping the left hand in front of the heart center, connecting heaven into our heart center. Close your eyes, and I will call forth the beings of light. Dear beloved divine Tao source, our beloved creator, all layers of creator, we love you, honor you, appreciate you. We invite you to please be present today. Dear all the angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, ascended masters, gurus, lamas, sifus, saints, buddhas, bodhisattvas, beloved Jesus and Mother Mary, beloved Buddha, beloved Kuan Yin, beloved Amitofu, uh, beloved Krishna, Ganesha, Vishnu, beloved Muhammad, all beings of light serving the plan of the light side. We love you all, honor you all, deeply respect you all, ask you to please be present at this time. We invite our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints to please be present at this time. We are extremely grateful for the opportunity to receive your guidance, your wisdom, and your blessings. And we ask that you uh, share today anything that you wish that can serve each of us on our soul journey specifically in the subject matter of soul communication thank you thank you thank you do the song of love peace and harmony transmitted to all souls in all universes we love you honor you respect you we ask you to please come at this time to turn on and we invite all souls in all universes to chant and sing love peace harmony one round that we can connect heart to heart soul to soul and assist humanity in returning to oneness. So for those that are new, this is a mantra. It is a healing song. Kristen uh, is my assistant. She posted <clears throat> the links. So you can learn more about this song and how it's been translated in over 40 languages. Uh, and it is chanted actually around the world in six different continents daily. So you can learn more there. In the meantime, if you're not familiar with it, close your eyes, receive the blessings. For those that are, please join in. Lula, Lula, Li. 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 Lula, Herling, oh, I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. <coughs> how, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. There is a huge gathering that it has occurred. Um, the song of love, peace, and harmony literally is like a like a a radar dish to all souls in all universes. Many, many beings of light come. Uh, 
So for those that are new, just tuning in, today we're going to be focusing on soul communication, how it can solve many problems in your life and put you in control of many of the things that seem to be out of your control. <clears throat> in order for you to understand how to do soul communication, you must first have the foundation of what it is. Uh, you don't need a special skill set to accomplish it. You don't need to go to school. You don't really need much of anything other than an understanding. Soul communication is available to anyone, anywhere, at any time. Very important to understand the simplicity. Anyone, anywhere. You could be on an airplane. You could be on the train. You could be in a closet. Anywhere, anytime. You could wake up from a dream. You can use soul communication. You can use it anywhere, anywhere, anytime. You can even teach it to others. Just today, I received an email from a student uh, in India. And the, it was a very unusual request, but I had helped her before, so she was checking, if, is there anything I can do? <clears throat> and it was um, a friend of hers was in love with another man, and this other man was divorced, and the friend uh, was of open and available, uh, and they loved each other, but according to their traditions and cultures, it was entirely and completely unacceptable and inappropriate for these two to come together. And the girl's mother and sister were basically stopping and halting and pulling her away from the man that she loves. So, you know, very sad to witness in this day and age um, that these cultural things inhibit people in love from connecting. She asked me what can be done. Now, uh, the, the blessings that I'm able to offer, the healing blessings that Master Shah has transmitted to me to offer services can, of course, help. But these things have very, very deep roots, soul-based roots. And so what did I suggest to her? I suggested that the, the girl do soul communication, do forgiveness practices specific to what's happening. Because the basic uh, universal laws are that if you have something unpleasant happening in your world, in this case, she was not allowed to be with the one she loved, other people were holding her back based on their own beliefs, their own whatever it might be. <clears throat> the, the universal laws would state that uh, this may be the first time it's happened, but there is a possibility that in previous lifetimes, previous experiences, uh, that she may have been one holding other people back from connecting. She may have been one keeping uh, others from, that had love from finding each other and so forth. And so I gave her this wisdom on how to apply forgiveness in this arena. I also gave her wisdom on soul communication, which I'll give you examples of today. So let's uh, acknowledge who else has joined. Yes, Alan, wolves do have souls, and everything has a soul, actually. That'll be the baseline from which we start. Welcome, uh, Kirsty. Thank you for joining. I know you're, you're new, and I appreciate your presence. Hopefully, you get some value out of today. Welcome, Shakira. Aloha, and welcome, Monica. Welcome, Rosetta. <coughs> and welcome to any other souls whose name I may have missed. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing. So where is the baseline? Where do we start with this wisdom and teaching? It starts with the wisdom that has been known as long as time has been in existence, but has been forgotten, has been ignored, has been um, miswritten, and or purposely destroyed. What is the baseline wisdom? That everyone and everything what is everyone? Everyone in people's heads, they say everyone is human, okay? What is everything? Everything is everything that is not human for understanding purposes. That means air, that means plastic, that means the moon, that means this bottle, and that means this cute little Buddha. Everyone and everything has, wait for it, a soul. Well, humans have souls. Wolves, you know, maybe have souls, right, Alan? But what what about this this little Buddha statue? Does it have a soul? What about this bottle that holds some turmeric? Does it have a soul? What about the moon? Does it have a soul? What about a piece of plastic like my cell phone? Does it have a soul? The answer is yes, 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 and yes. 
Well, this, this butts up against some of my belief systems. This butts up against some things that I, I have heard that maybe it's hard for me to grasp. Okay, you don't have to agree. No one's asking you to agree. What is being asked of you is to open your heart, your mind, and your soul to the possibility to this what is, uh, what, what at least I believe to be, an original source wisdom. Because everyone and everything comes from source. Source, creator, by whatever name you choose to call source creator, could be God, could be Allah, doesn't matter, same name, uh, different name, same, same source, <clears throat> uh, created all things. I'm sure that there will be zero disagreement with that from anybody. Creator created all things. So that means creator created the cell phone made of plastic and this bottle, right? No, a human, human made this bottle. A human made that cell phone. Yes. But where did it, the energy and matter come from? that originated the chemicals, that originated the sand for the glass to be made. Where did the energy and matter come from? Who created the energy and matter that created the sand that created the glass? Who created the energy and matter that created the wisdom for someone to receive how to make the chemical composition that created the phone? Source. Source is the creator of all things, all energy, all matter, that eventually come into physical manifest form in the form of an inanimate object in the form of something that we would call impossible to have a soul because the wisdom and teachings that have been given to us so far have not necessarily been thorough enough, uh, common sense enough to share with us this wisdom. Master Shah, with his book Soul Communication, with his earlier books, all things soul, all his wisdom is always about soul, share this baseline foundation everyone and everything has a soul so whether you choose to accept that or not just kind of work with it i tell people that if they have difficulty with any of the wisdom that comes through that you're not asked to to accept it you're asked to set it aside until you have enough information to where it either is completely uh irrelevant and is no longer valuable to you or additional information comes and it makes it make more sense in which you can then incorporate it in your life okay so uh, if you're unable to fully work with it, kind of set it aside and work with additional information until you can accept it or not. Welcome, Dean Forbes. Welcome also, Amanda Moyer. Uh, aloha to, um, I think I've got everybody there. Good. <clears throat> and so first premise, everyone and everything has a soul. Okay, next premise. Life loves to beat us over the head raise your hand if life loves to beat you over the head messes with your health messes with your finances life messes with your relationships life messes with us left and right and every way possible right life loves to mess with us doesn't it right it's very easy to blame something outside of us life loves to mess with us much easier to instead of taking responsibility but the universal laws state that we are responsible for everything that happens in our life, whether we like it or not, which kind of sucks. Because to take responsibility for health issues, when I didn't do anything to cause that car accident that's left me disabled, or I didn't do anything to cause that person that has left me and left the house and left the car and, and took the dog, took the house, took the car, and took all my money, how could that possibly be my fault, right? Well, the universal law of universal service says that when we do good things unto others we receive good things when we've done unpleasant things we don't receive some very pleasant things and it kind of sucks because we're good people in this life but we may have made mistakes in previous time those mistakes come back to us in the form of messages negative messages they bring suffering into our life we also have positive messages that come to us all the good things we've ever done those is what brings you might have wonderful relationships and poor health you might have no problem with finances, but can't, can't do anything to find a good relationship. Uh, and this is very clearly where we have done good things, we have good results. Where we have not done so many good things, we have unpleasant results. The universal law of universal service. It's a law. It's immutable. I'm not saying you have to accept that. Uh, you can say, well, I have difficulty with that one. You know, I have difficulty with this whole... Uh, cause and effect thing, this whole karma thing. Great, have difficulty with it. That's where you're at at this point in your awakening. You don't have to agree. Set it aside. See if you can get more understanding at some point in your soul journey where it does make a little more sense. I certainly didn't buy into it in my early years. I grew up Christian. Very difficult for me to buy into any of that. But I eventually became more and more 
awakened, more and more aware, and proof validated it out over time. I've come to express it as my truth now, it doesn't have to be yours. <clears throat> so in this understanding of the universal law of universal service, life brings to us, through our own um, creation, problems. It also brings to us wonderful conditions, good things. Soul conferencing is a tool through which we can apply the baseline wisdoms that these things in our life, these troubles, these problems, and the good things that we want in our life, <clears throat> like passing that exam so that we can move on in our college life, so that we can get our final degree and move on in the professional world, like finding that love of our life. These good things that we want can be positively impacted by soul conferencing. But we first have to have two very clear understandings. The first being nothing in our life is accidental. Nothing, nothing, nothing. You have your soul, your journey. Your soul is the carrier. Listen carefully. Your soul is the carrier of all the messages of all of your lifetimes of experience. If you only believe in one lifetime, great. You are, whether you want to accept it or not, impacted by your ancestors. Even the Christian teachings say that. The sins of the Father are visited upon the Son. Right? This is their teachings, not mine, not not. Eastern Buddhist teachings is so these teachings are actually throughout all basic belief systems that the ancestors and us are interconnected so whether you believe in multiple lives or not really doesn't have much relevance these things from the past affect our current moment which is why you're always taught do do good into others etc so when we work with this understanding we can put ourselves in a place of responsibility whatever good things are happening in my life Good job, pat yourself on the back. I earned this, or my ancestors have done good things and they have brought these to me. Thank you, my ancestors. Take responsibility for the great things in your life. You earned it, good job. Don't do anything to screw it up, right? If, you, if you're doing okay financially, you've been very blessed financially, you may have done good things, but make sure you give great gratitude and appreciation to your ancestors, because I can guarantee you 50% of your good uh, blessings are because of them. And uh, don't do things to screw it up. In other words, if you good, have good financial blessings, don't be overly selfish. Make sure that you are beneficial to others to sustain those good financial blessings for those in the future and so forth. So take responsibility for all the good things. Also, any of the unpleasant things, the, the, the woe is me relationships, the, the crying other girlfriend shoulders relationships, the health issues that never seem to go away, right? You have to take responsibilities for those also. Sucks, but we have to. So with this baseline understanding of soul, our soul carries these messages, the messages of positive messages, the unpleasant messages or negative messages. Now, let's look at relationship as an example of soul communication, soul conferencing, to find resolve, to bring healing to it. Uh, soul communication recognizes that everyone and everything has a soul. So in relationships, I have a soul, and the person I'm thinking of has a soul. That's kind of obvious. Nobody needs to, uh, to think too hard to get approval on that one. But did you know that there is a soul between you and them? Let's say it's an ex-girlfriend, right, or ex-boyfriend. For now, we'll use an ex as an example. And maybe that ex really hurt our hearts, and it's really hard to forgive them, and blah, blah, blah. Okay? They have a soul, you have a soul. Well, there's a soul between you guys. Did you know that? Everything has a soul, right? The relationship between you has a soul. Well, wait a minute. The relationship is not a person. It's not a bottle. It's not a cell phone. You just told me that all energy and matter has a soul and that creator created everything. Therefore, creator created the energy and matter. Therefore, it has consciousness in it or creator in it. So everything has a soul. I'm having, maybe I can accept that, maybe I can't. But now you're telling me a relationship has a soul, something not even physical? The answer is yes. A thought has a soul. What happens before words come out of your mouth? Do you think them? Yes. What happens before you create something physical? Did you think it, speak it, and then put it on paper and then manifest it? Yes. Thoughts are original creation. So thoughts have souls. So do relationships. A relationship has a soul. And that relationship soul between you and that uh, other person 
that maybe you don't want to work too much with has been happening for a long time. If, the, and this is my rule of thumb, certainly don't have to agree. My rule of thumb is if I've been around somebody more than three months, I probably have some kind of relationship with them in previous times. That's my perspective. Aloha, Eugene. Thank you for joining. Welcome, Kathy Monahan. Uh, welcome, Sarah. Welcome uh, to Jill. Welcome, Carrie. Welcome also to Phyllis Casper. Uh, welcome, Ilona. Welcome, Vanessa. Welcome, everybody else, if I missed your name. So, a relationship has a soul. Very interesting. So, if you work with the concept and the belief system that there is more than one life, then that would mean that you and this person that you may not have the greatest relationship with have done this before. You and this other person have probably been rah, 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 with each other many times before. You fall in love and then you fall out of love and you blame each other and da 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 da. Maybe they cheated on you, maybe you cheated on them. Blah, 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 blah. And the rat will goes round and round and round and this time they come around and think you failed. Uh, what does failure mean? That means that you did not complete the imbalance of the love between you with balance. Soul communication brings the highest and best conditions in which you bring balance to what that which is imbalanced. You would not have a problem in your life with your finances, with the boss, with the relationship, with your money, if you resolved the imbalance that brought it to you in the first place. What did I start with? Everything has a soul. What was the next layer? All souls uh, can be either positive or negatively affect us. Take responsibility for the positive, take responsibility for the not so positive, right? Okay, I'm having trouble with my boss. Okay, I'm having trouble with relationships, finances, whatever. How do I resolve it? I take responsibility. How do I resolve it? You resolve it by bringing it back to balance. You resolve it through one of the steps, which is soul communication. Within soul communication, you want to apply some of the four power technique and the deep wisdom of forgiveness, but soul communication is where it can occur. How many of you, raise your hands, have had arguments with your spouse and it's taken a day or a week to resolve it, right? It's just a really heated, you know, I'm right, you're wrong argument and it's taken, you know, days and weeks and, and you went and cried to your girlfriends or your guy friends and drank yourself under the table and blah, 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 right? Most of us have at least one or two of those. We've had those kinds of relationship blockages. And you talk to that person and you're like, you make total sense in your head. You're like, I don't get it. You did this, you did that, you did this, you did that. You said this, you said that. And I'm right and you're wrong. Why can't you just come around, right? We're right. Of course we're right. And they're arguing, yeah, but you said this and you say I always do that. And I, and I, I don't always do that. I, you know, in fact, I rarely do that. But you say I always do that in defense mode, blah, blah, blah. So they're busy defending themselves and you're like, rah, 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 rah. we all have those kinds of experiences unless you're just really good at relationships. And... The thing about soul communication is you don't communicate person to person. You communicate soul to soul. Well, why is that any better? And what does that mean, communicating soul to soul? It means first, first and foremost, trust, okay? Because most people do not have a wide open third eye where if they say, dear the soul of the person in the relationship with me, please come. Well, if your third eye is open, if your spiritual channels are open, you'll see their soul come right away. Their soul instantly comes. But fully 90 or so percent of us don't have wide open third eye. And so when we say, dear the soul of, please come, we think that we might be having a soul conversation or a soul conference with the air. We might even, our monkey mind might be going, oh, I'm a little crazy here talking to the air. There's really nobody here. But what you need to understand is that you, I, and everything came from source. We are all souls. We are all of the original energy and matter of source, which carries the original consciousness of source. We've all went through the process of becoming into physical form, becoming human, eventually becoming angels, saints, Buddhas, whatever else, and eventually going to the highest realms. Could take a billion lifetimes, but we'll eventually get there. And in this process, 
of being a soul, we forget that everyone else has a soul. We're too busy in our physical world, dealing with our physical world problems and stresses to grasp the single most important thing in this era of time that we really, really, really deeply need to grasp. I'll say it again. If you grasp at a very clear and deep level that everyone and everything is a soul first, you can solve a lot of your problems. Because when you try to deal with things to the level of human language, I blame you, you blame me, I am right, you are wrong, yeah, but you said, yeah, but she said, blah, 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 blah. The boss at work, why do you do this to me, blah, blah. And did, you, did it work before? Did it solve any of your problems before? I don't think so. Otherwise, you wouldn't have the problems. Talking rarely solves the problem unless you're really good at communication. But everyone has a soul, everything thing has a soul a relationship has a soul and the relationship between you and that person or you and your finances the relationship between you and your uh, health issues has a soul there is a reason for your health issues there is a reason for relationship blockage there is a reason reason for financial blockages negative messages carried at the level of soul do you get it our negative experiences, the harm that we had caused others in other lifetimes, or our ancestors. Inappropriate thoughts, inappropriate words, inappropriate actions that caused financial blockages, relationship problems, or health issues upon others comes to remind us. Everything, everything, everything is trying to remind us in this current life. I am here to remind you to solve me so that you can have a better, happier life. Everybody wants a better, happier life. Raise both hands if you want a better, happier life. We strive to have a better, happier life. The problem has been we have not had a set of tools that we can apply that clear the problem so we can have a better, happier life. We go see psychologists. We go drink a beer to cover up. We maybe go smoke some, some weed to cover it up. There's a lot of cover-ups going on out there, but nothing as a practical tool that we can use to solve our problems. The problems are created at they are, they are created in our experiences, but they are held at the level of soul. They can be resolved at the level of soul. Soul conferencing gives you the tool set to resolve them at the level that they are manifest on. We are a soul having a physical experience, not the other way around. So when you uh, uh, are in the middle of an unpleasant experience, those that really get this, you might have to listen to it two or three times, those that really get and stop yourself in your tracks of the suffering you're in and you go, okay, this is a soul uh, reflection. This is a problem that has been following me from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. It's either mine or my ancestors, but it's here and it's putting itself in my world to be resolved. And now I have a tool set to resolve it. Instead of using the physical world tool set, which is not capable of dealing with a sore world problem, I'm going to deal with it at the level of its origination. I'm going to deal with it at the level of soul. So when you're dealing with a relationship, we'll go back to that. This is you. This is them. And in the middle is the relationship soul. The relationship soul is a culmination of all the times you two have been together. This lifetime was great. This lifetime was not so great. This lifetime he cheated on you. This lifetime you cheated on him. And then you, and then you cheated on him. And then you cheated on him. And that goes back and forth six, seven times. And then this lifetime you come back together and you sort of do it pretty good. And then this lifetime you do another good one. And then this lifetime you hate each other. And so you might have 14 lifetimes in which you have had some good, some not so good experiences. You came back together again and now they're not in your world and you're grateful for that because they were did it did it did it did it and they were all these unpleasant things and it's all their fault <clears throat> the relationship soul doesn't care whose finger is pointing the relationship soul wishes your soul their soul wishes with all their heart your soul wishes not you your soul wishes with all its heart that you would wake up that you would quit blaming them, that you would uh, solve the problem once and for all so that it's not carrying this dead weight. Your soul is so exhausted of carrying lifetimes of dead weight. It wants to get into enlightenment. Your soul wants to reach heaven. But if you do not 
clear the blockages, it can't move up. Their soul is exhausted and frustrated. Your personalities are exhausted and frustrated, but your soul is not your personality. Your souls are much wiser than you. Soul conferencing is soul to soul, wisdom to wisdom. Their soul, which has lifetime experience, your soul, which has lifetime experiences. Soul conferencing bypasses personality. Soul conferencing bypasses ego. Soul conferencing bypasses those things that will not work. If you call their soul, welcome friends, welcome Terry, welcome Peggy, and you, their soul instantly comes. Dear the soul of my ex, dear the soul of my finances, dear the soul of, I'll have to give you other examples. We'll stay with relationship for now. Dear the soul of uh, my ex, could you please come? At one time, I fell in love with you. At one time, we had a lot going. And then this happened, and this happened, this happened. I now have a much higher and deeper awareness. I now recognize that we had personality reactions and responses because we had karma together. I maybe have done what I'm blaming you, what you did to me. In other words, you're acknowledging that whatever they did to you, you may have done to them. And whatever you may have done wrong to them, <clears throat> they may have also done to you. And you guys have been going round and round and round in your at will. Soul conferencing is about moving into a place of forgiveness. I recognize my mistakes. I wish to sincerely apologize. I've been blaming you for taking the house, the car, the kids, the money. I just use that as an example. And, and I have just had the greatest hatred towards you. Disgust, anger. And... I have been the one inside the prison cell, rattling the bars, blaming you this whole time. And you've been out there having new girlfriends, doing stuff with my kids, da 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 da. And as hard as it is for me to recognize, I don't want to do this again. I don't want to be the person that does this to you next time. I don't want to be the person that is miserable rattling the cage while I'm blaming you. I would love us to resolve these blockages in this lifetime. I recognize now that there's a soul level blockages, negativity blockages. I recognize that everything that I'm blaming you, it's a 50% possibility that I have done these things to you. I can't imagine that I had cheated on you. I can't imagine that I had taken the house, the car, the kids, the dog, and all the money. I can't imagine that I would ever have done that to you because the person I am today would never do that. But one thing I know for sure, I don't want to do this again. So I am not condoning or saying it's okay what you did. I am recognizing I may have made these mistakes and brought it around to where I was hurt in a deep way. Maybe you were hurt in the same deep way. If you were hurt in the same deep way that I have been hurt, then I know that would very much suck for you because I know how much it's, it was sucked for me, right? You have to go very deep. This is a deep forgiveness example. When you take responsibility, not saying what they did is okay, but acknowledging that there's a reasonable possibility that they suffered the exact same amount you suffered, it's a hard place to go to, but you have to go there if you really want to clear the crap once and for all. Okay, You have to go there if you want to clear the relationship crud once and for all. You go deep and you say, if I have caused that level of suffering for you, I beg your forgiveness. I beg. You're talking to their soul. I beg your forgiveness and ask from the bottom of my heart for forgiveness for whatever I have done to you. If I have done this to you, that to you, if I took your money, if I took your kids, I can't. Have, I know the suffering I've had. If you've had that suffering, forgive me. Now, what happens when you go to this level of comprehension at the soul? Because you're resolving soul of a blockages. I'm telling you, lifetimes of blockages, not just this one. You're going deep into this. You're truly doing forgiveness. Their soul and your soul are loving each other, hugging each other. Heaven is shining copious amounts of light, more than you can possibly hold in your own eyes, clearing the blockages. Your heart is releasing. The prison cell that you've allowed yourself to be in by blaming them, shaking the bars, going, it's all your fault, opens, and you no longer have 
that zing every time you see them. If you have that zing, you do it again. You keep doing it until the zing is gone. You keep doing it until the relationship is healed. This is how you use soul communication. Let's use a different example. The boss at work, okay? You don't love the boss. The coworker at work, the one that gossips about you all the time, right? Or uh, something of that nature, something related to work where you can't get a raise, you can't get elevated uh, into a newer position or better position. Um, somebody's always saying something about you something that's impacting your finances okay um, you can't seem to, to find the right clientele no matter what you do right uh, and maybe your own business this is how you use soul communication in this example everything has a soul does a business have a soul what have you learned today yes if you have a business it has a soul if your business is failing guess what that means that means that in you or ancestors in previous time harmed other people in business. There you have the root of your soul conferencing, okay? If you have a boss that is a jerk and, and, and talks down to you and does not promote you and promotes other people, nepotism, et cetera, et cetera, what does that mean? That means that you, maybe not to that person, but to possibly that person and other people, you or your ancestors, were nepotistic, uh, talked down to people, did not promote people, promoted the other people, maybe took bribes, blah, 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 control-oriented. You could have been a horrible leader in a previous time. So these things show up. Responsibility, responsibility, responsibility. It is how you solve your problems. Those who have landed on this live stream came here because it says, how can I solve my problems and put you in control of your stressful conditions? Like, okay, I'm interested in that. If I can solve my problems and get rid of my stress, I'm interested, I'm in. Okay, you're getting the wisdom. You have to do it. It starts with looking at these painful areas in your life and going, I've been blaming these people, yelling at these people, saying it's all their fault, blah, 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 blah. And I'm awakening that I may have created these conditions, or my ancestors might have. And I will now use soul conferencing. Dear the soul, follow me, do this with me. Dear the soul, and you choose, is it a coworker? Is it a boss? Is it, um, uh, if you have a business and it's not doing well, uh, you're not getting clientele? Dear the soul of all of those uh, who I have ever harmed in business, please come. In this early lifetime or to the soul of all those uh, my boss in this lifetime and all those that I have ever been the boss of in other times my ancestors may have been the boss of uh, do the soul if it's co-workers do the soul of all the co-workers I've ever uh, worked with in all lifetimes please come the room is full third eyes open you'll see hundreds thousands millions of souls okay soul conferencing is applying forgiveness to clear the Shen Qi Jing negative uh, experience blockages that are being held at the level of soul. Your soul, remember, reflects on your life. You're just like a projector. Your soul carries all the positive negative messages. You're down here. You're the, the physical manifestation of your soul, and you are experiencing good things in your life and problems in your life and the problems in your life, your soul is projecting onto your physical world. These are the problems you need to deal with now. But we go through life pointing, pointing, pointing outside of us, not taking responsibility. Soul conferencing is going, I take responsibility. Dear all the souls that I have ever co-worked with alongside me, if I have ever gossiped about you, ruined your careers, said bad things about you and other people, gossiped about you having sex with other people, gossiped that you weren't doing your job right, gossiped about this, you know, maybe that's what they're doing, right? Maybe you have issues with coworkers that are doing these unpleasant things. This is a soul communication. Dear uh, all those souls that I have ever been a superior to, a leader of, Maybe you were a leader in the military. Maybe you were a president of a nation. Maybe you were simply a boss in a company. Maybe your ancestors were in these positions. Dear the souls of all of those that uh, I have ever been the leaders of. I now recognize that I may have not been a very good leader because I have uh, 
have had people above me always talking down to me, always putting me down, not allowing me to move up in the world, not allowing me to prosper, uh, always condescending to me. I now recognize there's a reasonable possibility that I have done these things to others. You do a forgiveness practice, a sincere forgiveness practice. What does sincerity mean? Sincerity means you go to the depth of the suffering you experienced by being pushed down, held down, gossiped about, uh, whatever it might be. You know how bad that feels. And you imagine how bad those other thousands of souls felt Thousands of souls may have felt because you were the leader pushing them down, because you were the one not allowing them to go higher. There's a possibility. I'm not saying go down the negative road. You're a good soul today. You're a beautiful soul today. You would never do these things today. I know that. You know that. But there's a reason that problem is there. And soul wisdom says we take responsibility for it. When you invite all of those souls specific to your problem, People say, well, Paul, I don't know what, soul, how, what souls do I invite. What is your problem? I have problem making money. Invite all the souls who you've ever stopped from being able to make money. Simple. I have problem in relationship. I can't find love. Invite all the souls who you've ever stopped from finding love. You see? How do you do soul conferencing? You invite the souls of all those directly involved and all those that you don't remember that you may have negatively impacted in previous times or your ancestors may have negatively impacted in previous times. This is how you do it. You then do a depthful soul communication. Their souls are present. You just call them. Also, strongly recommend, write it down. Call God. Call Jesus. Call whoever you believe. You believe Krishna, call Krishna. Call Buddha. Whoever you believe. Call their souls to come. Call your heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints. Call as many beings of light as you can think of because they are beings of light because they offer unconditional service. The ones that are able to come will come. They will offer additional blessings. The, some of those souls that have been harmed, they do not want to forgive. Some of those souls, if you have trouble finding love, if all your relationships fall apart, you need to do very, very deep forgiveness practices. That means you have kept other people from having love. That means you have broken vows of love. That means uh, others have suffered the way you are currently suffering. You need to do deep forgiveness. Some of those souls will not want to forgive you. So when we call God, Jesus, Buddha, all the other beings of light, angels, healing angels, archangels, etc., their additional love can open the hearts of those souls. Please forgive, uh, you know, Paul has learned his lesson. He recognizes that he made some significant mistakes. Please forgive him. Open your heart. They shine. Jesus shines his love on the heart, opens the heart. God shines their love, opens the heart. They say, okay, because you asked me, Jesus, I will open my heart. I will forgive Paul. They release you. Your heart opens up more. All of a sudden, love comes your way. You find a good, healthy relationship. How do you solve your problems? These are examples. It can be this simple. It only requires a much larger widening of your perspective. Everything, 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 everything has a soul. Everything has a soul. Health. LaRonda asks about health. Third example. My feet, always in pain. I'm just making this up. Uh, Always heart issues, always migraines, always back pain, nine car accidents. I don't know why. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? We all have our associated health issues. You can probably write a novel on them. I have mine, you have yours. <clears throat> why? Same reason. Same, 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 same. Inappropriate thoughts, words, or actions. These are negative messages. They stay with our soul. Our soul is above, projecting onto our life good things that bring us our happiness, not so good things that bring us our problems. LaRonda says breathing problems. Okay, great. We'll use it as an example. This applies to everything. doesn't matter. Okay? We'll use that as an example. What would cause breathing problems to others? If we tainted the air, if we tainted the water, if we tainted the food, why would we do that? 
Well, maybe we wanted to have um, that town or village buy my crops instead of somebody else's. So we poured a little rat poison in the other village's crops. And then everyone had to come to my village to buy my crops. Well, I would never do anything like that. I'm a good soul. I would never do anything like that. You, that's probably true. Maybe you did not. But maybe one of your ancestors did. What's another example? <clears throat> Being uh, trapped in a, in, a, in a cave. Maybe you worked in a coal mine. Okay, um, and you were trapped and you died suffocating. This is called a negative memory. This resides with us and we haven't uh, worked it out of our body. Negative memories can stay with us. What's another example of what can cause breathing problems? Um, maybe one of our, uh, us or our ancestors uh, worked for a tobacco company at a very high level and uh, we promoted advertising that was of course false advertising that this is good for us maybe we we did the ad of the doctor promoting a cigarette okay that was our creation and this might have been you know 50 years ago before you were born previous lifetime maybe you created that ad and so as a result millions of people have breathing problems it doesn't matter i'm just giving you representative examples our karma comes from many, many, many different places. Our negative messages, sadness, grief, another example. We could have done great unpleasant things in a leadership position, as an example, where uh, we caused the loss of life because of our leadership role. And as a result, not only did those people lose their life, but millions of people, hundreds or thousands of people, their family members, their children, their wives, husbands, uh, they had significant sadness and grief which affects the lungs directly okay and that sadness and grief creates a negative message on our soul journey so these are just examples if you have feet problems that means maybe you bound people I checked my own akashic record one of the reasons I have uh, occasional pain in my feet because I uh, spent a lifetime bounding girls feet in China I, I, I would bind their feet that was my job you know the little girls they like they make them mind their feet okay how sucky is that karma right I would never do that now how rude is that but that's what they did back then and that's what I did paid well apparently so there is always a reason to know the reason is irrelevant I just give you examples when you have a health issue what is the soul communication they're the souls of all those in all lifetime that I are my ancestors have created harm by thought, by word, by action that is created, that is the source of my breathing problem, that is the source of my migraine, that is the source of my lower back pain. Lower back pain could be related to you using uh, uh, animals incorrectly, you know, using them to carry weight around incorrectly and harming their backs. You don't know where the source is. All the souls, animals could come. I have suffered for 30 years not being able to breathe mold this breathing that almost dying of suffocation this whatever it might be right the pharmaceuticals don't work I now recognize that I or my ancestors must have made some very very unpleasant mistakes the person I am today would never do that I have learned so much I am I promise you a good soul a beautiful soul I would never harm anybody but I recognize that it's very possible that this has happened in the past and as a result I from the bottom of my heart wish to sincerely from the depth of my heart apologize I realize that I may have caused dramatic grief and sadness from mistakes I or my ancestors may have made causing so many souls to have such deep grief and sadness their lungs closed down I or my ancestors may have made such grievous errors in our thoughts words and actions <clears throat> that this spiritual debt has come to create these blockages in my body I wish to deeply apologize to all of you what is soul conferencing <clears throat> it is using wisdom not in person the person but at the level of soul at the level of origination I will give one final example let's say that you want something that you need something to occur a good exam uh, getting a job 
um, solving a, a current relationship problem, something that's present and current right now, that, uh, that if you do the right things, you could possibly get the results that you really want. Okay? Does that person you're in relationship with now have a soul? Yes. Talk to them. Talk to the relationship. Does that potential boss of that potential company that you want to work for, or you're looking for a job and you're putting out your 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 uh, uh, communications, but no one's calling you? You're the soul of all of those in the industry that I specialize in, that I am really good at. <clears throat> all the companies that I've dropped off, all of my resumes at, all of the people that I've spoken to so far. All of those in hiring authority positions, all of you souls, please come. Do the souls of all of those that I've ever kept from getting jobs, please come. Do the soul of all those that have received my uh, uh, resumes and are in a hiring position, my name is. You talk to their soul like you, like they were in front of you. My name is Paul Fletcher. I am skilled. You just read your resume. <clears throat> this is my resume. I have four years of college in this. I have uh, f uh, 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 additional college in this MBA. I have uh, worked at this location for four years in this function and position. These are my responsibilities. You just read your resume. Now, there's nobody in the room in front of you, but the souls are there. You da -da 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 -da. I can serve your company. <clears throat> I know I can be of great value to you. I would be an asset to your organization. I wish to sincerely apologize to all of these souls for this in any lifetime that I have uh, kept you from being promoted into the position that you are good at, uh, that I may have not recognized you when you had the skill sets necessary to get that job. Da, 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 da. You talk to them as if they were there and you do a forgiveness practice as well. And then you finish in every case in all these conversations, very important finish, Love, peace, harmony. Very important finish. You must send love to these souls. Love, peace, harmony carries far higher frequency than you and I do. When you chant love, peace, harmony, five minutes, ten minutes, you are bathing these souls like an elixir, like a spraying a mist of love over them, and it causes them to release their blockages. It causes them to open their heart to you. Uh, so after you have the soul communication, I would like to sing Love, Peace, and Harmony. I invite your souls to chant with me. Lu la, lu la, li. Play on, turn on the music. Ask the soul of all the beings of light to join you to serve this request. I gave this example to a woman who, uh, uh, in India, <clears throat> who was unable through, after a year and a half, to get her documentation for uh, getting the ability to graduate with everybody else. Everybody was about to graduate, all of her friends, but her documentation was being uh, held up, held up, held up. Everybody had an excuse. And no matter what she did, it wasn't happening. I gave her this exact wisdom. Do their forgiveness practice, call all the souls of all those involved in the decision process. Um, ask forgiveness, sing love, peace, and harmony. Uh, within a week or so, it was resolved. Why? Because she stopped dealing with it at the level of physical. She dealt with it at the level of soul. I hope the many explanations and examples I have given you can assist you with solving your problems moving forward. I do recommend blessings, divine blessings. Uh, master Shah has blessed me as a master teacher to be able to offer extraordinary blessings that can clear these kinds of blockages much, much faster. It can help clear relationship blockages, the negative memories, negative messages. These can be cleared through the blessings that I offer. So these wisdoms and teachings should be applied regardless, even after a blessing or before a blessing. But the blessings expedite things substantially. So if you're interested in those, you can contact me through uh, Facebook Messenger <clears throat> or through my, um, uh, my website, asoulhealer at yahoo.com. Uh, Kristen has been assisting me. She'll put my contact information on there if you'd like to connect with me. Um, so I'm here to serve you. Thank you, Divine Tao Source. Thank you, Heaven. Thank you, Master Shah, for bringing this great wisdom to us, uh, for allowing me to be a vessel through which this wisdom can be shared with others. And uh, thank you to all of you for sharing this so that other people can benefit. <clears throat>
love you love you love you thank you thank you thank you I will see you Thursday three hours earlier than today 9 a.m. gong song gong song gong song bye bye everybody